One of the most striking things about Obama's period in office so far is the continuity with the Bush administration, not simply in terms of foreign policy, but in keeping a security state at home and carrying on with Guantanamo and the attacks on civil liberties and the economic policies. American liberals were drooling when Obama first entered the White House. Less so now. In Iraq, despite the promises, American troops are going to stay on the ground, confined probably to six huge military bases for eternity, or unless a new insurrection gets rid of them. In Afghanistan, Pakistan, the war has actually been escalated. Under Obama, there have been more drone attacks on Pakistan than there were in the preceding five years of the Bush administration. The recent attack on Libya shows an addiction to war that is extremely unhealthy, but once again marks continuities. Given that Obama's campaign had largely been funded by Wall Street, it was always an error to imagine that regulation was going to be the order of the day. Despite the financial crisis of 2008, which has wrecked the United States, the rich continue to prosper, the poor continue to suffer, health reforms totally diluted and actually crafted by a lobbyist for the insurance company. Obama like his predecessors, is in the embrace of the very rich who have been running the country for nearly three decades. The decision to take out Osama bin Laden by violating Pakistan's sovereignty, to execute him rather than capturing him and bringing him to trial, has done Obama's standing in a militaristic country a great deal of good, and he's hoping to be re-elected on that basis. But what it actually reveals is a deeper problem. What price democracy when both political parties operate in exactly the same way?